Hello friends, in this video, I am going to discuss about the IV characteristics of MOSFET. Okay, basically, obviously, I shall deal with uh, N-type MOSFET because already in my previous video, I told you that whenever we discuss some new concept with respect to MOSFET, we prefer to deal with the N-MOS. N -MOS. Why? Because for N-MOS, you know from the basic concept that for N-MOS, the uh, electrons are the carriers and mobility of electrons are greater than mobility of holes so that we prefer to uh, discuss some concept of MOSFET with respect to NMOS because holes are uh, carriers for PMOS and holes mobility is lesser than electron mobility so because of this there are some advantages of NMOS over PMOS you shall uh, come in detail when you will uh, study the VLSI system design or analog electronic circuit. So anyway, I am going to discuss about how to determine the current versus voltage character characteristics without using any differentiation concept or integration concept. This is the most important concept. Uh, in obviously some standard textbook like Alexander Sadiku, they are beautifully they explained with integration and that is the original concept what should explain. But the issue is that we sometimes uh, we find difficulty to understand those concepts with integration differentiation like that. So what I uh, will show you in this video how to determine current versus voltage characteristics which is very important and which is basically base of any MOSFET related topic without using any differentiation and integration. Okay, so obviously you know that we are considering this is n mos right because see the channel is channel i have shown here the channels is made up of electrons and the substrate or the body is basically p type right so as the channel is uh, made up of electrons that is uh, electrons are negatively charged so obviously this is n mos right so what we have done we have grounded the source general convention only we have followed we have given positive voltage in the gate and in the drain also we have given positive voltage supply why because we applied the positive voltage in the gate why see because p type the body or the substrate for this nmos is basically p type and for p type the majority charge carriers are holes and minority charge carriers are electrons so when we apply positive voltage in the gate what will happen the holes will be will get repulsion and ho holes are what holes, holes are basically majority charge carrier of p type substrate they will come in the downward direction of the body because they will get repulsion from the positive voltage which we are applying in the gate and what will happen the minority charge carriers electrons which are present in the p type body they will be attracted by the positive voltage of the gate and they will start accumulating just uh, below the oxide layer the thin oxide layer is there just below the thin oxide layer the minority electron will start accumulation okay they will start accumulate okay now see what will happen after a certain gate voltage you are just uh, from the zero you are just increasing the gate voltage then uh, uh, some electrons are coming and uh, they are accumulating uh, in the below of uh, the uh, oxide layer and after some time what will happen uh, after a certain gate voltage uh, positive gate voltage what will happen there will be uh, accumulation of electrons such that they will make a channel from source to drain okay and to make the complete channel in between source to drain the minimum amount of required gate voltage is known as threshold voltage right you know this so the gate voltage should obviously uh, at least be vt or threshold voltage to just make the mosfet on in that case channel will form and for proper operation the gate voltage must be greater than the threshold voltage right and why we are applying positive voltage in the drain see here source is n plus that means it is n type so electrons are majority charge carrier in the source channel is also made up of electrons the drain is also n plus that means for drain also majority charge carrier are electrons now the channel is formed that means between source and drain one connection path is already formed but to make the current flow we should somehow apply voltage in some particular place in such a way that the electron should flow right so what we have done we have applied positive voltage in the drain so what will happen due to attraction force of this 
positive voltage what will happen from source via channel to drain electrons will flow that means the flow of electron will be uh, from the mosfet to the drain outside mosfet okay so obviously the current flow direction is oppo just opposite direction of electron flow so we can say that for n mos the current will enter okay so you know those basics so it is denoted by id now what is our aim we just our aim is to calculate some mathematical expression for the drain current we say drain current id okay so our aim is calculate the mathematical expression for current from basic concept from ground level you tell me what is current current is q by t you studied in class 10 then after in high secondary you studied current equal to dq by dt okay but as i told i will discuss with respect to ground level okay so just consider simple expression i is equal to q by t you may think why i am not using dq by dt or del q by del t okay if we use those then obviously integration and differentiation will come into picture to so effort that i am using simple expression that is i is equal to q by t now question is to determine drain current what should be q and what should be t think carefully obviously q should be the amount of charge in the channel because through channel the current is flowing right so because of movement of the carriers through the channel only the current is generating right so we should calculate the q as amount of charge in the channel and what is t t is obviously time taken to cross the channel which is formed when vg or gate voltage is greater than the threshold voltage that means i is equal to q by t that is fine but to determine the i in the mosfet we should determine one thing is amount of charge in channel and another thing is time taken to cross the channel if we able to calculate this two obviously we can calculate the drain current okay clear so first let us proceed to our first aim that is step 1 that is calculation of q now see carefully q as i told you q is basically the amount of charge in channel which is accumulated due to attraction force of this positive voltage which we are applying in the gate clear so what is q how to calculate the uh, charge stored in the uh, channel very basic concept as you know from my previous video that in this portion one capacitance is formed where one plate of the capacitance is the electrode of the gate another plate is basically the channel and in between gate and channel there is si2 oxide layer which will basically act like insulator or we can um, uh, more accurately say that this will this oxide layer will basically act like the uh, dielectric in between two parallel plates of the capacitor so we can say between gate and channel there one capacitor is formed okay so obviously charge in channel is related with this capacitor think for uh, some time you will clearly get the relationship i am telling just pause my video and think then again start my video so see how it is related q is basically charge of the channel that means we can generally say this is charge of one plate of the capacitor which capacitor the capacitor formed between gate and channel okay so what do you know q is equal to c into v capacitance into voltage right so we can calculate the q or amount of charge in the channel from that equation simple right so that's what i have written here how to calculate q q is basically amount of charge in the channel that is amount of charge in one plate of the capacitor which capacitor cgc okay that means the capacitance which is formed between gate that is g and channel channel for c okay so already explained in my previous video i shall post the link in the description you can check from my previous video clearly you will understand okay now first thing is over that how to calculate q we got it now q is equal to c into v fine so c is equal to basically the capacitance in between gate and channel okay now what about the voltage voltage q is equal to cv consider the general expression voltage is uh, the uh, potential of plate of the capacitor right now see 
we can say the voltage is basically VGC, that is dead voltage minus channel voltage, right? So VGC, obviously oh, the voltage which we will, uh, which we may consider for calculation of this capacitance is only dead channel voltage, right? So VGC, so Q equal to C, that is capacitance formed between gate and channel into VGC, that is gate to channel voltage, clear? So we got we know Q is equal to C into V, that is Q is equal to C, in, C of GC, that is gate channel capacitance into VGC, that is gate channel voltage, fine. But this is not true, okay, so that I have written here one cross symbol, this is not true. Now you may think this formula is following the concept of physics, how it can be incorrect. This is very uh, obvious question may come in your mind. But in my discussion, I have not considered one case of MOSFET. The channel, I already explained initially, that the channel will only form when the gate voltage will cross the threshold voltage, right? So some amount of voltage is already used to form the channel in between source and drain. So you should consider that voltage also, right? That voltage is not contributing in the voltage of the uh, cap, uh, plate, uh, parallel plate. That voltage is basically just making another plate of the capacitor. That is not contributing in the potential of one plate, right? So simple, quite easy, Q is equal to CGS into VGC, then minus VT. Because VT amount of voltage is not contributing to create the potential of one plate of the capacitor. And which capacitor? Gate channel capacitor, okay? So the main expression will be Q equal to DGC minus VT into CGC. Clear? Now, what I told you? VGC, that is get channel voltage. Fine. So VGC, obviously, VG minus VC. Basic concept of physics, VAB is equal to VA minus VB. Same VGC equal to VG minus VC. Okay. Now, see carefully, what is VG? And what is VC? You should understand carefully in this portion. So, uh, make good attention here. See, we are applying positive voltage in the gate to create the channel in the MOSFET, right? Okay, fine. So, the voltage which we are applying in the gate, that itself is gate voltage VG. So, we got the value of VG. But we don't know what is VC. VC cannot be calculated simply because see this is channel. We are not directly connecting any voltage source to channel. And here comes the concept. How to calculate the channel voltage? This is uh, appear to be a problem in our derivation. But we will try to complete the derivation. So any problem should not hamper our way or our aim. Okay, quite easy. Think carefully. Basically, here you need to do this by integration. Just now you will understand that if you do by integration, that will be more accurate. But to avoid integration, I have made another way. So just check uh, the video. What is happening? Our aim is to calculate VC or channel voltage. But we are not directly applying any voltage in the channel. So how can we calculate? Quite easy. See, channel is from drain to source. In between drain and source, the channel is there. So we can draw like this, right? So in drain, what voltage we are applying? Some voltage, VD. Okay, some positive voltage, VD. And in source, what we are applying? Ground, zero potential. But let us assume VS at that zero potential. That means source voltage is zero. But to denote this, we have used this symbol VS. Okay, now see in channel, in the starting of the channel, we are applying VD. And in the ending end point of the channel, we are applying Vs, we can say. So, here the accurate result of channel voltage, we can use by integrating, by uh, integration, we can get the actual result of the channel voltage. But rather, simply, for simplification, intuitively, we can say like this also. Average channel voltage is equal to starting point potential minus ending point potential by 2. Clear? So, starting point potential is Vd. 
ending point potential is Vs by 2. That means to calculate the channel voltage, we are taking basically average of two end points. Okay, so Vc is basically Vd plus Vs by 2. But just now I told you source is grounded. That means Vs is equal to basically 0. So Vc equal to Vd by 2. Clear? Up to this, I hope the uh, derivation is clear to you. Now let us uh, go through our derivation. Uh, so what is happening? So we got Vgc is equal to Vg minus Vc, right? See here, Vgc equal to Vg minus Vc, okay? So Vc, what we got? Just now Vc equal to Vd by 2. Substitute that, we got Vgc equal to Vg minus Vd by 2. Now, in MOSFET discussion, what we prefer? We always prefer to represent the voltage with respect to the source voltage. And here, this is also fine because if we uh, represent something with respect to source voltage also, then it hampers nothing because source is grounded, right? So it will not hamper the value, okay? Clear? So we can say, let us calculate VGS. So VGS like VAB is equal to VA minus VB. So similarly, VGS equal to VG minus VS. Fine. So as VS equal to 0, put that, we can get VG. So VGS equal to VG, we can say. Similarly, VDS equal to VD minus VS. That is equal to VD minus 0 because VS is 0 is equal to VD. So we can say VDS equal to VD. Now, our aim is to represent all the voltages with respect to source voltage, right? So, instead of Vg in this equation, substitute Vgs, okay? And instead of Vd in this expression, substitute Vds because our aim is to represent the voltage in terms of source voltage. So, it's with respect to source voltage. So, we got this expression, that is Vgc, that is voltage for one plate of capacitor, that is Vgc which we use to determine the Q, okay, to calculate the current flow, right? So, Vgc equal to Vgs minus Vds by 2. Simple, 